My esteemed colleagues, my glorious friends, welcome to another episode of the Will Wisdom Interviews. My name's Will Wisdom. These are the Will Wisdom Interviews. You're watching, and that's awesome. Today, we have a great show for you, ladies and gentlemen. A really, a really special show. And you know, all of our shows are special. So keep that in mind. Um, today's program is going to feature up to four or possibly even five languages. Posiblemente hasta cinco idiomas. Um, <laughs> none of which I can speak correctly. Um, the trees in front of the door. I'm not expecting any visitors, but just in case, and um, just in if if any try to enter while this talk is going on, the tree will block them. So don't worry. This is going to be a a full show, uninterrupted. Um, we'll see if we have to do any editing. I'm going to start with this mug which says je t'aime and does anyone know what that means first of all what language is that yes it's french and it means i love you and i love you my my watchers my my people out there mi gente um yeah, so, yeah. Okay, Joanna, I'll get to the point. Okay, so the point of this show, this is not going to be a super long episode. Um, oh, by the way, today is Debbie's birthday. So reach out to Debbie and say happy birthday, June 5th, 2021. We're also welcoming the good part of the year when it's nice and warm outside mostly and at least at least light out um i'm not talking about you brazilians i'm i mean i i give you credit for enduring the the bad weather down there in brazil um today i'm going to read a poem i wrote um uh, back in April 2018, the subject of which is the relationship between the written word and music. Um, when I lived at Watermill Place back in a back in 2010, my friend Raphael, um, who my, my friend Raphael, who introduced me to the connection between smoking and the intellectual life. Um, my friend Raphael had a book called Philosophy and Music. And I thought that was an interesting title, although I never read the book, but maybe I will someday. Um, maybe I'll put that in the, the footer. Um, so I'm going to begin by reading my poem. It's an unwritten poem. I mean, <laughs> no, it's a written poem. It's an untitled poem, uh, which, which features four stanzas numbered Roman numeral one, two, three, and four. And I'll begin. It's a bit of a tragic poem, actually, as you'll see. Uh, I think my mind was in a dark place at the time I was writing the poem, uh, as it often is. Um, so let's begin. I'll just show you it for for a second, just to just to prove that I wrote it. Um, okay. Stanza one, or part one. Your words lure me. They entice me. More than a woman's body. 
even as her beauty crushes your very existence. For the music of the know-nothings contains more substance than your books, even while your books prove us wrong. Music is a two-edged sword of ambiguity and spirit, silence and beauty, a non-happening conversation yet with the power to prove the truth within. Stanza two. I tried to couple it with words, to marry music with the man of her dreams, the intellectual life, the written word. They went on one date and it went okay. To be honest, it was fire. They had a night that will live forever. But when morning came, the, into the intellectual life was gone, nowhere to be found. And, to be honest, music was glad, preferring to work alone. Beauty embracing darkness, truth embracing light. Stanza three. Something must have gone wrong in my brain, got your chemicals all in my veins. Feeling all the highs, feeling all the pain. Let go on the wheel, it's the bullet lane. Now I'm seeing red, not thinking straight, blurring all the lines, you intoxicate me. Just like nicotine, heroin, morphine. Suddenly I'm a fiend and you're all I need, all I need. Yeah, you're all I need. By the way, I didn't write this stanza. These are the lyrics to a song by Camila Cabello. Um, but I put it in the poem. It's you, babe, and I'm a sucker for the way you move, that you move, babe. And I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know I'll never be the same. It's you, babe, and I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe, and I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know. I'll never, ever be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Sneaking in bean town when the lights are low, off of one touch I could overdose. You said, stop playing it safe, bro. I want to see you lose control. I modified the lyrics there a little bit. Just like nicotine, heroin, morphine, suddenly I'm a fiend and you're all I need. All I need. Yeah, you're all I need. It's you, babe. And I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe. And I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know I'll never be the same. It's you, babe. And I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe. And I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know I'll never ever be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. You're in my blood. You're in my vein. You're in my head. I blame. You're in my blood. You're in my vein. You're in my head. I'm saying. I'm saying it's you, babe. And I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe. And I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know. I knew I'll never be the same. It's you, babe, and I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe. And I could try to run, but it would be useless. You're to blame. Just one hit of you, I know I'll never, ever be the same. And now stanza four, which is also from the lyrics of a song. This one, in this case, it's Cool Kids. Um, I forget the band. They're driving fast cars, but they don't know where they're going. In the fast lane, living life without knowing. So a little, a little commentary. Um, oh, Cool Kids by Echo Smith. Um, a little commentary, that last stanza about living life without knowing harkens back to the theme of truth and the written word, uh, or truth in general. Um, the last two stanzas, three and four, 
I think are interestingly written words in my poem, but they're actually music. So they're words, but they're referring to music, which features lyrics, which are words. And so it's interesting to think of this kind of phenomenon. Um, and that's certainly a theme of the poem, something that's there. Uh, my friend, whose name I will not mention because he likes to stay anonymous, um, when he read my poem, he said, I'm not sure what to say, but I could tell it was poetry. <laughs> or he said, like, I can't, I can't process all of my thoughts right now, but I'll say this, it was poetry. <laughs> so... It's certainly a dark poem because it's saying that music and the written word, while they're destined for each other, are like the, the best they could achieve was a one night stand. And they've remained separate. And I think that is a truth these days, a tragic truth. Um, because on the one hand, I think the people who love music, well, okay, it's interpretable, but I'll just say if it's the case that one loves music but doesn't know much about the written word and the intellectual life, that is tragic because the music calls them to the fullness of truth but they can't get there usually just by listening to music. There's a compliment. They, they, the music and the written word complement each other and they call towards, they call us to each other. Um, but in this poem, they remain separate. And I think that happens a lot these days, as I just said. Um, and it's the same the other way around, where a lot of scholars maybe need to work on their musical side, um, their, their mind is calling towards truth, but the truth is also calling them towards love, beauty, um, music, the heart. The mind and the heart are one, but they're often separate. Now, I will say this, they are distinct. And that is kind of one po point the poem is trying to bring out is that sometimes a mu music can tell it, teach us things about truth that, that any book can't teach us. And that, yeah, that that's present in my first two stanzas. Um, and as well, um, books, books in the written word can, and like philosophy, um, f yeah, philosophy and the intellectual life can um, teach us a lot about reality that, that you wouldn't be able to deduce from listening to a song, even though, no matter how beautiful it is. Um, great so we're off to a great start i'll just read my first two stanzas again your words lure me they entice me more than a woman's body even as her beauty crushes your very existence so this stanza is kind of bringing out the greatness of words and their their beauty their their lure um and the 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 most beautiful I could thing I could think of was a woman and kind of saying that words words can be even more powerful than physical beauty. Um, for the music of the know nothings contains more substance than your books, even while your books prove us wrong. It's saying kind of like how music can cut to the heart in a way that that words can't sometimes. At the same on the same on the same token uh, you know words can cut to the heart sometimes in a way that 
music or sound can't or or beauty or art can't sometimes the translation or the the explanation is is more powerful um, music is a two-edged sword of ambiguity and spirit silence and beauty a non-happening conversation yet with the power to prove the truth within and i capitalize truth Stanza two, I tried to couple it with words to marry music with the man of her dreams, the intellectual life, the written word. They went on one date and it went okay. To be honest, it was fire. They had a night that will live forever, but when morning came, the intellectual life was gone, nowhere to be found. And to be honest, music was glad, preferring to work alone. Beauty embracing darkness, truth embracing light. Um, the last part, beauty embracing darkness, truth embracing light, uh, that gets into the mystery of the relationship between darkness and light, as well as beauty and truth. And I was thinking how beauty often, I mean, light is totally beautiful. The sun is beautiful, but, um, the beauty of the the beautiful things that the heart knows often come in spiritual darkness or the calling rather than the fulfillment. Um, as I think, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Tupac said something like, I thank you, I thank you bad times of my life for all the great art that came out of it. Um, okay. So I'd like to mention now that, um, okay. So as I, as I already um, pointed towards, the word is in fact wed to music. This is kind of an epilogue. I was thinking of writing a fifth stanza uh, in this regard. Truth, the word is in fact wed to music. Truth and beauty are one in God our Father. So God is truth, God is beauty, God is one. Um, so like the persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, silence, the word, and music are distinct but one. And that's a beautiful mystery. Um, so Mortimer, Mortimer J. Adler um, made a edited, was editor of a great book series that went through history and um, contained all of all of his choices for the great books, what what he would include in the great books. And um, he mentioned one piece of music in the entire thing. And of course, music is not a book that's written in the way a normal book is written, but he mentioned Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And uh, I think that's significant. Um, so when I was going through a tough time back in like around 2012, I also did get quite creative. And um, so here is, here is the cover of the CD for Beethoven's Ninth Symphony that I would listen to, uh, conducted by Herbert von Karajan. And out of all of the Beethoven's Ninth Symphonies that I've that I've listened to, this one is the best. And um, <clears throat> so, on the back is a portrait of Beethoven, and around around that I I wrote um, the passage from the Gospel of Matthew. 
about putting your light on the lampstand. I wrote it in Latin, and I'm going to try to read it. I'm going to try to read it. Vos estis lux mundi. Non potes civitas abscondi supramontem posita neque accendunt lucernum et ponuit eum sub modio sed super candelabrum ut luceat omnibus qui in domo sunt. Sic luceat lux vestra corum ominibus ut videant vestra para bara opera et glorificent patrum vestrum qui in celis est. And that means you are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly father. Um, so Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is actually a great example of words and music coming together because in the, in the final movement, which is the fourth movement with two parts, A and B, um, in the final 4B part, the choral part, um, Beethoven uses um, Herbert, what's his name? Schiller's Ode to Joy, which is a poem that Schiller wrote that Beethoven used for his, to put to his music. And um, <clears throat> it's, so it's called Ode on de Freude. And I'm gonna read it in German first and then in English. And I'm gonna sing the first part. <laughs> and this is gonna be bad. Oh, Freunde, nicht diese Töne, sonder lasst uns sangene Märchen stimmen und Freuden wollere. That was really bad. Um, Freude, schoner Gotefunken, Doctor aus Elysium. Wir betreten vertrunken emlische dein Eiligtum. Deine sauber winden wieder, was die Mode streng geteilt. Alle Menschen werden Brüder. Wo dein sanfter Flügen weilt. Wem der Große werf gelungen, eines Freundes Freund zu sein. Wer ein Holdes Weiß errungen, mische so einen Jubel ein. Ja, wer auch nur eine Seele sein nennt auf dem Erdenrund. Und wer's nie gekonnt, der Stelle weinend sick aus diesem Bund. Freude trinken alle Wesen an den Brüsten der Natur. Alle Guten, alle Bossen folgen ihrer Rossen Spur. Küsse gab sie uns und Reben, einen Freund geprüft im Tod. Wollest war dem Wurm gegeben, und der Cherub steht vor Gott. Froh, wie seine Sonnen fliegen durch des Himmels praktischen Plan, laufet Bruder ihre Bahn, freudig wie ein Held zum Siegen. Seid unschlungen Millionen, diesen Kuss der ganzen Welt. Bruder, über dem Sternenselt muss ein lieber Vater wohnen. Ihr stürzt nieder Millionen. Anest du den Schöpfer Welt, sich in über im Sternenselt, über Sternen muss er wohnen. 
And that means, oh friends, no more of these sounds. Let us sing more cheerful songs, more full of joy. Joy, bright spark of divinity, daughter of Elysium, fire inspired we tread thy sanctuary. Thy magic power reunites all that custom has divided. All men become brothers under the sway of thy gentle wings. Whoever has created an abiding friendship or has won a true and loving wife, all who can call at least one soul theirs, join in our song of praise. But any who cannot must creep tearfully away from our circle. A little depressing. All creatures drink of joy at nature's breast, just and unjust alike taste of her gift. She gave, she gave us kisses and the fruit of the vine, a tried friend to the end. Even the worm can feel contentment, and the cherub stands before God. Gladly, like the heavenly bodies which he set on their courses, through the splendor of the firmament, thus, brothers, you should run your race as a hero going to conquest. You millions, I embrace you. This kiss is for all the world. Brothers, above the starry canopy, there must dwell a loving father. Do you fall and worship, you millions? World, do you know your creator? Seek him in the heavens. Above the stars must he dwell. <laughs>